All right, so this is video number five, and I'm going to attempt to sort of tie everything back to where we're at. And then in quadratic six, I'm going to talk about a little more of the solving and the stuff actually that's yeah, part of chapter four. Um, the quadratic formula and the discriminant will come in that video. So to try and tie together where we're at, we have quadratic functions that either come in standard form or vertex graphing form. Vertex graphing form lets us sketch the graph far easier than if we just use this one, right? So then we moved on and went, okay, so how can we get from one to the other? We talked about characteristics. Oops. of the graph, which included our vertex, whether it has a max or a min, um, let's call orientation, does it open up or down and how wide is it, or an axis of symmetry, domain, and range. And then we hit x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are where this function touches the x-axis and in order to find those we had to slide over to chapter four and start talking about the equation the equation really is exactly the same except y has already been set at zero and we are solving And the solutions here are the x-intercepts over there. They're the same values. So now when we went to solve, we know we can use factoring as one method. We can actually graph and just look for where in the world our x-intercepts are. And we can use completing the square. So then it would be a jump out. But of course, math people like to always find a better way a faster way and in fact what they're doing is they're finding a way um that you can teach a machine to do so mathematicians took completing the square with variables in it and they did all the math and they created a formula and i ran out of room to write that so we'll do it here they created a formula called the quadratic formula which lets you solve it without using all of those extra things. And that's what we'll, we're going to do in the next video.